It's a beautiful sunny day here at the University of Lincoln, beautiful Rise Home campus. You're joined at the wonderful Strawberry Farm and we're going to be showing you loads of cool stuff around agri-food robots. First of all, I'd like to introduce the team. So say hi, Stephen, who's on the camera. Hello, everyone. Hello, fantastic. We've got two pickers down at the bottom, Sam and Sue. Fantastic. We've got Catherine and Nico, who are going to be taking the second segment. And we've got the amazing Rupika behind us, who's going to introduce us to our initial robots. We are focused on robots in agriculture. There's a lot of opportunity that these robots can provide. And here we're going to demonstrate two items. We've got a robot behind us who's going to augment the help of the pickers. And it's going to do a lot of the labouring work for them, but it does this in an autonomous way. So Rupert's going to take you through that. Catherine and Nico are going to take you through a cognitive element where we're going to see how do we know when to pick strawberries and how does a machine like to look at them? So without ado, I'll introduce you to Rupika. Hello everybody, my name is Rupika and I'm a PhD student here. I'm standing next to the very stylish Thorval robot. Thorval robot is the closest thing I've had to a pet pony. Thorval here has its own computer and then you can see it has a LiDAR on every other corner. So this is what helps it sense and then avoid obstacles. You can see we have a joystick here, which means we can control Thorval manually, but we are not going to be doing that today because Thorval has become smart enough to do things on its own. We are going to be demonstrating how Thorval acts as a transportation robot to aid fruit pickers after they've collected uh, picking one tray of strawberries or so. Are we ready, guys? Brilliant. Powered by Saga Robotics is a very, very robust robot. And you can see the terrain in an agricultural domain is not always smooth, it's pretty crude. The wheels are very sturdy. Tobble carefully positions itself uh, in such a way that it avoids other robots and potentially even other human beings and uh, navigates. Um, avoiding hitting on any poles, you can see it repositions itself every now and then, and then it makes its way to the picture. Uh, can you quickly tell us how the robot has come to you now? What have yeah. you done? Uh, it's just an app, like I click a button to make it stand here. Like I'm going to load a trailer. It's time to send it back. I'm just clicking the button again. Brilliant, thank you. As you just saw, um, the calling of a Thorval robot is very, very straightforward, very simple. Doesn't need the picker to be, you know, technically um, educated or anything. Um, even language barriers aren't usually a problem. The user phase is very, very simple. Um, you would have noticed that the Thorval uh, mentioned itself that it's going to be staying next to the picker for 45 seconds that it will leave in 45 seconds. The reason that it says this is because uh, in case the call was an erroneous one, uh, if somebody pressed um, for, uh, for a ro pressed to call for a robot by mistake, then the towel does not waste its time or even block the path for other robots or human beings to pass through. Instead, if there is no tray uh, placed on it in within 45 seconds, it comes back anyway, it does not wait for anybody. Thorval is being a diva. That's what it's meant to be. Do we have any questions? So we've got one question. Mm -hmm. How does the ma mapping work? Oh, that's that's a good one. So um, the mapping for most of the research done with Sobel robots are discrete. Like they are on a topological level. So the polytunnel environment, if you can just show them, this is discretized into hypothetical nodes, like virtual nodes. So the entire farm is mapped as hundreds of different nodes. On a very, very simple level, the input given to the robot is the number on the node that it has to go, go to. For example, this picker, the position that he is standing in might be a particular node, say node 60. So the, the app basically tells the robot not the exact position, but um, approximates it to the node and then it 
quickly traverses to the node. The, the path planning is discrete. It's it's on a topological level. Uh, we will now move over to Catherine and Nico, who have something very interesting to share. Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine. And I'm Nico, and we're also PhD students here at the University of Lincoln. And today we're going to show you the basics of a fruit counting system. So as Gary already mentioned, today we have a lovely, bright, warm, sunny day at Rise Home. And what this means is that today the fruit will be ripening really fast. Now this poses a problem for farmers because farmers need to have an idea when their fruit will ripen and what sort of volumes of fruit they can expect to have ripe at any point in time. And this is important because they need to know uh, how much labor to schedule and also whether they're going to meet their market requirements. So if it's going to be enough or too little. Um, so to do this, they need to have some form of yield forecasting system, which takes into account sort of the weather, but also very, very importantly, what the crop is currently doing. So as you can see, we've got some unripe strawberries and some semi-ripe strawberries. And to get an idea of what sort of yields you can expect, you really need to be able to count the berries to do this accurately. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, this is just a small strawberry farm. And even here, this task is daunting to be able to count every single strawberry on the crop, to be able to make an accurate forecast. And on a commercial farm, this would simply be impossible because you'd have thousands and thousands of plants. And so as a result, what we're going to show you today is the basics of a robotic system, which is trying to do just that, count fruit. So let me introduce you to our Thorvald. So this Thorvald is the cousin of the one that you've just met. And what this one is doing is it's got some cameras. These cameras are quite special. There's an RGB camera, which is just like the one on your phone. And there's also a depth camera, which shows you how far away in the picture an object is. And what this robot does is it collects a video feed, which is uploaded to our database. And we can then run some artificial intelligence and um, analytics on that afterwards. So across to Nico to show you just that. Here is a video from last year, because right now it's just a tad too early in the season for us to actually have a lot of ripe strawberries. So we collected this video, much in the same way that we're collecting data right now, last season. And we uploaded the video to one of our online databases, where we then ran our algorithms, which in this particular case is a neural network, a sort of machine learning algorithm, in order to perform detection for the strawberries on this video feed. So basically, that means we ran the neural network on it in order to localize the strawberries and to detect with what kind of strawberry we are dealing. So whether it's a ripe strawberry, an unripe strawberry, or a strawberry flower, for example. And as Catherine has already mentioned, this is quite important for um, labor scheduling, um, yield forecasting, stuff like that. As you can see, a system like this is really beneficial. Fruit detection is the basis of fruit counting. Uh, we can also build fruit tracking on top of that. And um, this would allow us to, to count the fruit on a strawberry farm. And that, in turn, would allow for decision support to assist the farmers. So. Okay, so we've got one question from a, sorry, I might butcher this, Manal Hilal. Do these robots report diseases in their crops and send alarms? So that's not something which is implemented in this particular system, but it's something which the current system could very easily be adapted to, to include. Um, basically, when you build a system like this, you start off by collecting a data set. And what that means is you take some pictures and then you annotate it so you draw sort of boxes around this is a ripe fruit this is a semi-ripe fruit this is an unripe fruit fruit this is a flower but you could also add a, a another category to that which is this fruit is diseased and so simply by adding another category you could extend this system to potentially be a diseased fruit counting system and that could then be attached to something like um, a warning what we are already doing however is we are treating uh, for mildew with a UVC treatment system that is attached to a different thermal robot that's just going through the rows at night and it treats the plant with a UVC lamp in order to uh, ward off mildew. And that's run by Saga Robotics. We do have another question. Oh, go for it. A bit short in time. Go for it. What is the biggest challenge in front of you? Oh, the biggest challenge. Um, I think the biggest challenge is data collection mm -hmm. of pickers because um, as we are trying to make the system more intelligent, use uh, behavioral models or even deep learning or so, we really don't, we struggle to collect data, especially that of the pickers because um, that is not, a, for example, if uh, uh, for people who are doing vision, when we have to observe the data, 
from strawberries, then you know you 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 can have a farm of strawberries and then just go for it and observe. But then when we want to understand the realistic behavior of pickers, it's not that easy because they have to consent to being captured, and then we have to um, you know have some methods so that they don't behave or act differently when they are being recorded as opposed to how they would. otherwise act so the challenge mainly lies in collecting data we don't really have a huge repos repository of picker behavior data that that is what i would think the biggest challenge is we have another question from a javi how ca how fast can it scan wouldn't it need a lot of time to scan a big field yeah. <clears throat> well the there are different factors play into this on the one hand we have the speed of the thawed rover that goes currently quite slowly along the roads for various reasons among other safety reasons because there are pickers in the field and everything um the cameras operate at a frame rate of 13 frames per second at the moment and the uh neural network that is run on top of it it takes i think roughly maybe a tenth of a second to infer a single image so we are really at the very least we are operating at a 10 hertz detection frame rate for the uh for the video feed but the the robot could go much faster uh than it currently does so while i cannot give you the definitive answer on how how long the data collection would take um it could be sped up quite significantly in comparison to what it is now because you can also deploy multiple robots uh simultaneously to go through different rows at the same time so basically it varies <laughs> super thank you so much for joining us today and all the best thank you